And we are back with the third segment of the GSMC Basketball Podcast presented by the GSMC Sports Network. And in this third segment, we're going to talk about the Cavs winning the playoff series against the Orlando Magic in seven games. But before I actually talk about that, I do want to bring up a quote that I that literally just popped up on my feed. Anthony Edwards literally just said this like 12 minutes ago on the like he was asked a question on the fans comparing him to Michael Jordan literally exactly what I was doing and he said quote I want it to stop he's the greatest of all time I can't be compared to him and obviously a lot of respect and a lot of respect is being paid to a player as good as Michael Jordan but what I really find funny is how before, Kevin Durant was actually Anthony Edwards' GOAT. He said it on an interview. He thought Kevin Durant was the greatest basketball player of all time because he was unguardable. Now, after he swept him in a postseason, Michael Jordan's the greatest of all time. Like, I sort of, I just find it, I find it a little bit funny and, like, I don't know. I thought I thought it was funny. And it's like uh, and kind of ironic considering how I was literally just talking about Anthony Edwards and boom, here comes a quote from him. But <clears throat> regardless and oh, wait a minute before I begin with the Cavs series, I have more breaking news. You're going to have to hold on on the Cavs news. Hold on. So, okay, yep, the audio, please stop. Thank you. So, the Clippers have allegedly made multiple contract offers to Paul George below the max, which Paul George will obviously not, which Paul George will not accept. Los Angeles wants to keep George, but he appears heading towards unrestricted free agency this summer. And this is via Evan Sidre. And obviously, I mean, like this was, we sort of knew that this was going to be a problem going into the, going into free agency for Paul George and, um, and the Clippers as an organization, especially what really doesn't help Paul George's case in getting a max from the Clippers is the fact that Shai Gilgis Alexander and the Oklahoma City Thunder are farther into the playoffs now than Paul George. That does not help Paul George's case in getting a max whatsoever because if you guys don't remember this trade, the Clippers dropped a they they gave they gave OKC everything for Paul George. Like everything. I'm going to have to I have to look at the actual trade details like in order to accurately like tell everyone like what the picks were because there were so many picks and so many like swaps and like so many players in this trade that it was it's so difficult to um to remember just exactly how many picks they have so <clears throat> excuse me so for the for the trade that um the for the Paul George trade, the Clippers received Paul George in exchange for Shai Gilgis Alexander, Danilo Gallinari, Miami Heat's unprotected first round pick, which was which ended up being Trey Mann, um, the Clippers unprotected first round pick, which ended up being Jalen Williams, Clipper um the right to a 2023 first round swap with the Clippers, not conveyed. Clippers 2024 unprotected unprotected first round first rounder Heat's 2025 protected first rounder for 1 through 14 unprotected for 2026 and right to 2025 first round swap with Clippers as well as the Clippers 2026 unprotected first rounder like they practically sold their soul for Paul George in this trade like all of those assets that I just mentioned for one player and then all of those assets 
end up making it farther than that one player in the season. And it's not like Paul George is getting any younger either. So it's really not looking good for Paul George and getting that max as like especially like given the performance in the postseason because again the performances in the postseason that he's had are also not a very good um argument to his case of wanting the max and it's like it's really just bad luck for it's really bad luck for Paul George but I'm sure the Sixers will gladly take him and he can do the exact same thing that he does on the Clippers as he does on the Sixers I think that's the team that's probably going to pick him up but Regardless, let's actually go into this Cavs series against the Orlando Magic because like I kept I kept holding it off, but again, like that was I feel like that was like pretty solid information to know. So <coughs> excuse me. Right up so right after my show on Friday, the well not really right after, but after my show on Friday, the Cavs ended up playing the Orlando Magic in Orlando. And Orlando ended up winning 103 to 96 and they were able to force a game seven Paolo Banchero ended the game with 27 points eight rebounds Franz Wagner ended the game with 26 points Jalen Suggs ended with 22 and let's see that was basically like that was basically it in terms of scoring for the Orlando Magic and they didn't really need that much scoring because outside of Donovan Mitchell there was no other real star for the there was no other real star player for the Cavs that provided enough scoring for this team like let me just go ahead and do some math real quick and sort of figure this out but yes in Donovan Mitchell he ended the game with 50 points 50 points he ended the game the rest of the team ended with 46 so he outscored his own team, and that's the reason why they lost. S- play, simply, simply put, that was the reason why the Cavs lost Game Six. Because how do you let one player outscore your whole team? How do you let one player on your team outscore the rest of the players on the fourteen-man roster? Well, technically, the with the people coming off the bench, it would be a nine man option at this point really since there's only nine people since there's only a few people coming off the bench but you understand the idea and so 50 points 22 for 36 from the field Darius Garland was the only other player to score more than 20 points and he was he had 21 shot 10 for 17 from the field Max Struess ended the game with 10 points and that was it for all of the scorers in double digits the entire team shot very poorly. It was literally just Donovan Mitchell doing Donovan Mitchell things and trying to keep the team alive, but unfortunately that didn't work. And they were forced to play in a Game 7. Luckily, they were able to play that Game 7 at home. And lucky for them, they were able to come out winning 106-94 to against the Orlando Magic. This is the first playoff series that the Cleveland Cavaliers have won without LeBron James since 1993. That is a very, very long time without playoff success, without your king to guide them. And obviously, like, you know, I mean, it it doesn't feel like a long time because the Cavs have been good for a long time because of LeBron. And... Well, not really. I mean, yeah, I, I guess 11 years is a long time. And they have, like, literally, they have their they have their moments where it's like every time, like, when LeBron left, the team would get worse. But now they finally, they finally have a great team without LeBron James. Now, Paolo Benchero in this game, in this elimination game, he ended with 38 and 16. <coughs> Excuse me. And... That's obviously very, very, very impressive coming in from from Paolo Benchero in an elimination game. And he wasn't getting any kind of attention from the media for this. And I really think it's unfair because he was a very important and vital asset for, for this team. And this Orlando Magic team has shown that they are competent to compete in the postseason. Like, I mean, they just took the Cavs to seven games. What's more competent? What's more... 
showing competence than that. I mean, the Cavs, like, I mean, they're still, like, the middle tier of the, uh, of the Eastern Conference. I'm not saying that they're a great team. Like, they're great, great, but they are a very solid team. And, I mean, Paolo Benchero dropping 38 and 16, what more can you really want from him in an elimination game? It was really unfortunate, however, how the rest of his team couldn't really, couldn't really follow suit. Jalen Suggs ended the game 2 for 13 from the field. Wendell Carter Jr. ended the game 5 of 10 for 13 points. France Wagner was 1 for 15 with 6 points, which is obviously the biggest reason why the Orlando Magic ended up losing. By far, the biggest reason why they ended up losing, because he only made one shot in the entire game. And... It really, like, if you're the Magic, it really, like, you, it really stings because you had the opportunity to win it. Like, you really had that opportunity, and it just, just dropped it. Completely dropped the opportunity. Now, Donovan Mitchell, he ended the game with 39 points. I mean, what else could you expect from Donovan in an elimination game? And the only other player that had, um, well, actually, I lied. The only other player that had relatively good scoring, I should say, is Karis Levert, who ended with 15 points. Then Evan Mobley ended with 11 and 16. Max Struess ended with 13. And Darius Garland ended with 12 on 3 for 13 from the field, which is honestly very concerning considering that is your second option and that's how he's playing in an elimination game at home. Like, that's not really something I think the Cavs should look forward to and that's not... That's not something I think the Cavs should just glance over, if that makes sense. But regardless, going back to the rest of the games that are... Actually, no, not the rest of the games that are going on. What am I talking about? Excuse me. But going back to the game that I was talking about with the Cavs and the Orlando Magic and their series. I'm just looking at the box scores right now. It's... It's really like... It's it was it was a close series. Like this series was really really close, and I'm very surprised that it didn't get much media coverage, because this was the only first round that ended up going to seven games, and we get we barely get any media coverage of such a great such a great fight like such a great battle between these two teams. I think that's very very unfair, especially for Paolo Benchero, who's literally just, you know, just undermined by the entirety of the media. Just completely undermined by the entirety of the media. Now, let me just go ahead and look at my notes, because I did have some notes for the final game on <clears throat> the awards that I give out to, like, you know, players and their playoff success. Like, let's see. Let me just go right ahead and open up my notes. All right, so for the awards in this series, the obviously the series MVP is Donovan Mitchell. Like, no questions about it. He averaged 28, 5, and 4 with, on 46, 25, 82 shooting splits. So obviously, like, they're not relatively efficient. However, there was really nobody else on the Cavs team that is suitable to get the series MVP. So it has to go to Donovan. <clears throat> the finals, LeBron, and actually, you know, what's really intriguing about Donovan Mitchell's numbers is that his, the team plays a lot better with, um, actually, wait, no, that's untrue. The team plays only slightly better with Donovan Mitchell on the court, and even then, his um, on-court numbers are still minus 4.9, and Obviously, like that's not that's not really ideal. Paolo Benchero, he he's the finals LeBron. He ended the game so you know best player on the losing team. He ended the game with tw well not game. He ended the series averaging twenty seven eight and four, with one steal on forty six forty seventy six shooting splits, and fifty five point four percent true shooting. The sixth man of the series, I got to give it to Markel. I mean, he averaged 6, 2, and 1 
on 59, 0, and 56 shooting splits. And his on-court net is plus 17.3. So I feel like that big number is the difference maker. Now, unfortunately, now we move on to the... Now we move on to the bad um to the bad award which is um the most disappointing player in the series and that was Cole Anthony. For some reason Cole Anthony he only averaged 5 points, 2 rebounds on 32, 15 and 89 shooting splits. Now that is very very bad, very unfortunate, but again, like, you know, it's the most disappoint he was the most disappointing player in that series and I really don't like saying that like someone is disappointing. But, I mean, you can't really argue those numbers. So, the man of the um, the man of the hour, that was Donovan Mitchell. Obviously, he ended the game with he ended the game with thirty nine, I believe it was, in game seven, and he also ended with fifty in game six. Both of those were elimination games, and. I don't think you can, like, there's really no other man of the hour than no man that met the moment other than Donovan in that series. And then there's the other disappointing player of the series, which is France Wagner. Not really, wasn't really disappointing, like, overall, but was, he was disappointing in the very last game where, you know, one for 15 from the field. But, <coughs> excuse me. That's all I have for this third segment. So with that, we are out of time, and I'm going to go blow my nose again uh, after the sh- um, uh, during the short break. Jesus, if only I could English. And then in the fourth segment, we're going to talk about all the playoff teams left in the NBA and just how young they are, and just how like how many young teams are in the are in the playoffs right now. I just want to briefly talk about that because I think it's very interesting. So. I'll be right back after this short break. For the best and latest podcasts available anywhere, go to the podcast app on your cell phone and type in GSMC to access free content-rich podcasts on health and wellness, book reviews, sports, entertainment, relationships, social media, movies, technology, finance, and even weird news. Subscribe and download the GSMC Podcast Network's family of shows, available everywhere podcasts are found. 